Hello, this is Ryan Kingsline. We're going to take a look at the new brush system in ZBrush 3.5 R3. So the first thing that we notice is that when you open up the brush palette, there's just a lot of brushes. In fact, if we take a look at ZBrush, uh, you can see all the brushes here, but then opening up Lightbox, navigating to the brush folder, and just say going from one to four columns, shows you that there's a ton more brushes that uh, ship with ZBrush. Some of them are very useful, such as these scale brushes uh, here. So with all that complexity, we need a new way to access them. And that's by pressing B on the keyboard. Then you press the first initial of the brush, so P in this case for planar brushes, C for a uh, clay brush. Then every brush has another secondary letter assigned to it. So planar, for example, has L. Polish, for example, has uh, O. But you may want to assign your own hotkey to the brush, your own secondary key. So L might not make sense to you for the planar brush. But uh, A may, might make more sense. So to do this, you have to press B to get the brush pop up. P to isolate the P brushes, planar brushes, and then control click on the brush that you want to change, read the message that comes up, and then press the uh, letter that you want assigned. So in this case we press A and then A becomes the new uh, secondary letter for that. So let's take a look at that in the interface. Press B for our pop-up. P for the planar brush, and then control click, read our message at the top that says press any key combination, press A, and there you go. So now let's take a look at uh, the, the hard, uh, hard surface sculpting system in ZBrush. Uh, this is really run by three brushes and three features. That's the, that's the easiest way for us to look at it. There are other features that are part of this, but the primary ones are the planar brush, the trim brush, and the polish brush. Then the features are the orientation feature, the backtrack feature, and the depth feature. So we're going to look at all of those in turn, starting with the orientation. Controlling your orientation is a very powerful feature inside of ZBrush, and it's not often uh, used or discussed. So there are two types of, well, three types of control. You can select uh, once orientate, continuous orientate, and then a specific orientation. The, uh, the, the picking process really goes by wherever your cursor is. So if uh, my cursor is right here at the side of the nose, then it's going to pick a surface normal facing the direction of this orange arrow. Uh, if I am hovering up underneath the eyebrow, then it's going to be down and to the right. That's going to be the surface uh, normal that it's picking. Uh, when I have once orientate on, then the first point that I click, that normal is going to be the, uh, the primary direction of my brush. My brush is not going to change its direction. Continuous orientate is different in the sense that it is continuously sampling the surface normal. So this is more useful when we are doing blending or form building or uh, just you know refining planes. Choosing a specific orientation, which we'll see in, a, in just a second, allows us to define very clear, very controlled planes. The backtrack feature is very important to mechanical or hard form uh, sculpting. So we're going to take a look at plane, line, spline, and path. Plane essentially creates a uh, virtual 2D plane that is positioned on the model. This depends on uh, what kind of orientation setting you're using as well as your samples and, and things like that. Uh, line allows you to drag out a line and then backtrack along that line to uh, make an effect. So let's just stop there and, and, and understand that. 
Uh, we're going to go to our stroke. We're going to go from plane to line and lower my draw size. I'm going to click from the left side to the right side and then drag backwards. And as I drag backwards, it's going to attempt to cut a clean plane across there. Nice and clean. So this can be a good way to establish very uh, controlled and specific directions. The other backtrack features just give us more nuance to our control. So for example, we can go to the spline option, which we can actually explore much better by going into the brush palette and selecting the planar spline brush. And we can see from the planar spline that it has spline active, it has a specific alpha, and one other thing it's got different is that the, uh, it's ignoring position information when it's sampling it. And uh, that just helps stabilize it slightly. Uh, but the function of planar spline, or uh, really of the backtrack spline, is to take the um, area between two points, two points being where the yellow circles are, and allow you to carve backwards with a bit of a soft slope. Notice that that's not a really a straight line, that's a bit softer. So I can come in here and any of the lines that I end up drawing are just going to be a little bit uh, more gradient, a uh, little bit softer edged, uh, not so uh, strong. If I switch over to planar line, then everything I do from this point is going to have a hard edge. So planar spline is giving us a little bit more softness. We can control that softness by adjusting track curvature. So let's set this all the way up to 80, increase our draw size, click from one point to another, and draw back. Notice how that's a much softer curve. And that can also be taken advantage of when we are in models uh, where we've got a, let's say, a hard edge that we want to uh, blend between. So for example, this hard edge right here, we can click from one side to the other and ask for it to gradient that side. Let's smooth it out a bit in case the polygons are quite dense. And take our stroke, spline, adjust that downwards. There we go. I had to make my draw size a slight bit larger but now we are able to blend that in a little bit uh, softer. The path stroke will allow us to define a specific path. So let's go back to just the planar brush. We're going to select path and so that we can actually see this let's select an alpha we will click at one point and draw out a path. Careful if you, if ZBrush senses you've gone back upon your path, it enacts the uh, sculpting side. So now see how we've drawn out a path and then the alpha has followed that back. So there are some uses to that in hard surface sculpting, uh, but there's other uses uh, as well. So we can go to, uh, let's say for example, the magnify brush where we have a hard alpha. I've enabled path. I'm going to turn snap to track on, lower my draw size, and now I'll be able to say draw where I want this to put these rivets, which are quite massive. So I'm going to lower that down. And it will nicely conform to exactly where I wanted those. So now let's take a look at the depth feature in ZBrush and see how we can make that work for us. 
the uh, setting the depth value really just lowers the influence. So you can see setting it to negative 15 puts the focal point of our brush deep inside the model. Whereas setting it to positive 15, or actually I think those numbers are reversed, uh, it raises the effect above the uh, surface. And uh, this has potential as well. The next feature that's really important is just the ability to depth mask the top and the bottom uh, differently or really to just take this circle because that's really what a, a brush is, is it's a circle of influence and squash that. So with uh, depth at zero and depth masking off it's a simple sphere that's uh, the effect is at the surface wherever we click and all the polygons in that area are, uh, are part of that. Uh, if we were to say set depth to uh, let's say 15 it's going to drop inside but then by setting outer and inner depth to 0.5 and negative 0.5 or vice versa around there uh, we're going to start to shrink the effect and really only uh, only really affect or isolate this one particular cross section of the model again very powerful also you have to keep in mind that this level of control is a very high level of control. It is not something that you want to be doing in the early form development stages.